this week, I'm going to start uh, this part two of chapter 11. And this is on, uh, again on compressibility of soil and consolidation. Uh, we're going to spend uh, two or three lectures on this part and that should conclude chapter 11, compressibility of soil. And again, part two, of course, this is part of that uh, con compressibility of soil discussion. So we are still at this uh, course objective to estimate magnitude and time rate of consolidation. And uh, for part two, so we have a few topics to cover. So I'm going to spend today's lecture on the first topic. So this 1D consolidation theory. So basically what's behind this time rate of consolidation calculation. And then next lecture, we're going to talk about uh, how to do the calculation. So how to estimate time rate of consolidation. And finally, just a bit of uh, uh, extension basically on methods to accelerate consolidation settlement. So that's a plan for part two. In for previous part, part one, we spent quite a few lectures on this topic. And the central question to part one is basically to estimate consolidation settlement. And in that part, actually what we calculated is the final settlement due to consolidation. We haven't touched on anything about how far or how fast that process is. In just a very quick review, um, the calculation, the consolidation settlement is basically, so we're estimating, let's say you have a consolidating layer of thickness H and you're putting load on top. Okay. And that primary consolidation settlement we call SC, which is basically the change in height delta H and we link that to change in void ratio. So that's how we estimate the final consolidation settlement. So this is on the right hand side, this is phase diagram. So we have solid and void. Okay. So we're linking the settlement that changing height to the change in void ratio because that's the cause of consolidation in that equation So that's basically what's behind that consolidation settlement. So we're linking settlement to void ratio change. Okay. So that's part one. And then for this settlement calculation, I give you these three cases. I call case one, two, and three. And remember SC is related to void ratio change delta E. And delta E is related to basically the effective stress change delta sigma prime through those uh, modulus, through those uh, coefficients, uh, recompression index and compression index. And I give you the three cases based on the relationship between uh, current effective stress, pre-consolidation pressure, and final effective stress. Case one, this is NC clay. Case two uh, and case three are both OC clays. So those are the three calculation cases. Again, uh, this is just a very quick review of part one. Okay, uh, so that's where we are. And these SC values, whether it's case one, two, or three, those are final settlements. So we haven't talked about how long it takes to reach that settlement. And that is the focus uh, of chap part two here. Okay, so for part two, a central question we're going to answer is, how fast will the settlement caused by primary consolidation occur? So what's the time rate there? And specifically, we're going to answer these two questions here. So the first one is how long will it take to reach a certain consolidation settlement or a certain degree of consolidation, something uh, I'm going to define in today's lecture. So let's say if you want to reach 90% or 80% degree of consolidation, how long will it take? That's the first question. And the second is to predict after a given time, how much settlement has occurred. Let's say after five years, you put the loading on top, how much settlement has occurred. So these two questions are closely related to time rate. So that's a focus of uh, part two here. All right, again, to understand the time rate of consolidation. So before I introduce that consolidation theory, so let's look at the primary consolidation first. So what causes primary consolidation? So if you recall from previous part, part one lecture, um, so consolidation is basically a process where water gets drained out of voids, which leads to that void ratio or volume change in cohesive soil. 
So that's basically what causes this primary consolidation. And because it's so closely uh, related to the drainage of water, so the rate of this consolidation depends on the rate at which water flows out of the soil. So that makes sense. And that rate actually depends on two factors. The first one is this permeability concept. Okay. So this permeability is something we discussed back in chapter seven. Um, so permeability, roughly speaking, basically describes how easy or how difficult water can flow out of, out of soil. Okay. So that's permeability. And the other uh, closely related factor here, this is uh, drainage distance. So the rate of consolidation essentially depends on the permeability, which is the property of the soil itself, and depends on the drainage distance. So which is basically set up of the problem, it depends on the geometry of the problem. And permeability, if you recall, uh, this comes from, again from chapter seven. So this is table 7.1. So this lists the uh, hydraulic conductivity. So remember that's basically coefficient of permeability of different types of soil. And for clays, the permeability is very small. So that's why in clays, it typically takes a very long time for that consolidation to happen because the permeability is very small. It takes very long time to water for water to drain. Okay. So that's why you see in clays, this time rate is an issue. Okay, so that's why we need to predict this time, time rate here. Okay. Um, so here I'm comparing basically the compression and the sediment for these two types of soils. So we're focused on clay. And here I'm explaining why in sand, the time rate is typically not an issue. So when you talk about time rate, again, you're more concerned uh, with clays. So if you look at these two types of behavior, I'm going to put time as a horizontal axis for the plot on top and load as a vertical axis. Okay. So first let's compare the uh, time um, versus load for sands and clay. Okay. So if you put a load on top of a sandy layer, So let's say you are loading a sandy layer, you put a load on top, and that load is going to be transferred to sandy grains, to the sand particles in that layer. And same thing happens to clay. So if you're loading a clay layer, okay. so that clay particles is going to feel that increase in loading until it reaches that uh, pressure you put on top, and then it becomes a constant. Let's um, make this a little bit longer. Okay. So when it comes to the time it takes the load to be transferred to soil particles, if it's a sandy soil, okay. and this happens almost instant instantaneously. Okay. So this takes, so this happens like in seconds. If we put a load on top of sandy layer, that load is going to be felt throughout that sandy layer in seconds. Okay. So it's almost an instantaneous transfer of load. But that's not the same thing for clays. So for clays, okay. it's going to take a very long time for that load to be fully transferred to our clay particles throughout the layers. So that's in months or even years. And because of this delay in load transfer, if you look at the settlement, so I'm going to plot delta H here. And again, it's with respect to time. Okay. So the kind of behavior you would expect by uh, putting load send or some load on top uh, is you're going to get this increase in settlement. In the, eventually it's going to reach a plateau. Okay. 
So that's basically the deformation, that sediment, vertical sediment in say sandy layer on the left-hand side. So first in term of the magnitude, so in term of Delta H, so this for sandy layer, let's say, um, So this is an arbitrary number, but it gives you an uh, idea of the magnitude, the, uh, the range of deformation. So typically in inches. And then the time. Okay. So time it takes for that say, settlement, that inch of settlement to occur in sandy, sandy layer, maybe in day, a day or so depending on, of course, the permeability of the sand. So that's where all the sediment basically uh, occurs. Then for clay, that process is quite different. So for clay, first of all, if you look at the magnitude, So you would expect much higher sediment values, so much larger sediment in clays, say in terms of feet. And then the time it takes to fully uh, consolidate, it's in terms of years. Again, these are just arbitrary numbers, but the magnitude gives you some idea of how long it might take. So it could take years for that consolidation settlement to complete in clay layers. And because of these differences in clays and sand, that's why the time rate of consolidation in clay is a much bigger issue. So we know that settlement could take years to complete. Imagine you're putting a building on top, you don't want the foundation soil to continue to settle over the next 10 years, 20 years. So that's why uh, it's a much bigger concern. For sand, if you put the load on top, that, that settlement is going to complete within a matter of days. Okay. So for to estimate this time rate, okay, um, we're going to focus on this clay soil. And to estimate the uh, time rate of consolidation for clay soil, uh, we're going to use this simple uh, conceptual model here. So this is a cylinder, spring cylinder model. And the theory we're going to start study today was uh, proposed and developed by Kao Tosaki. Uh, so you have heard his name a number of times in this course. So many of the actually uh, theories we learned in this course uh, were attributed to, to Kao Tosaki. So this theory of consolidation uh, was developed using this simple spring cylinder model. Okay. So in this model, uh, so we have a cylinder filled with water. This is water. And you have this water uh, assumption that water is incompressible. And then you have a spring, so this is a spring. And the spring force uh, we call F. Okay. And we measure the axis pore pressure here. So this axis pore pressure we call delta U. So this axis water pressure, uh, water pressure basically is access to the hydrostatic equilibrium state. So this axis per pressure, so that's a setup. And we have a small valve uh, on top. Okay. And this is a loading platform. Okay. So we're going to load this system. Okay. So this is a simple spring cylinder model. And we're going to use this to understand the consolidation process. All right, so what we're going to do with this model, so the initial condition, we're keeping this valve closed. Okay. So you basically you do not allow water to drain at this stage. That's the initial condition. And everything is in equilibrium. Okay. So in this state, 
it's in equilibrium so your excess pore water pressure is zero so this doesn't mean the water pressure is zero it, it just means the excess water pressure is zero okay so that's access to the equilibrium state okay. so this is equilibrium so access forward pressure is zero and the force in the spring is also zero okay. so that's our initial state so this is again access Uh, the second stage, uh, this is uh, what we call instant load apply. So we're applying a load P here. So we're loading the system with some load on top we call P. And just to make the uh, process easier to understand, I'm going to assign some arbitrary value here. Let's say, okay. so we're loading this system. I put a 50 pound force on top and pressing this system. And for this stage, and keeping the valve closed, and again, we have that incompressible uh, water assumption. In, in this stage, because water first is incompressible, and then second, because valve is closed, water supports all the load you put on top. So there's no deformation in the spring. So delta U, At this stage, it's 50. Okay. So it supports all the load you put on top. And spring force F is zero. So that's the second stage. Put it on top, keep valve closed. So water supports all load. And then the third stage is some intermediate time. So again, this is 50. So let's call this time T1. And for this stage, we're going to open the valve. So we have uh, this water flows out of this uh, cylinder. So that's we call it delta Q. That's, and as water flows out, the spring in the center is going to deform. And as the spring deforms, it's going to take up some of the load. Okay. So that load is going to be shared by water and that spring in the center. And again, just to make the understanding easier, I'm going to make arbitrary number here. Let's say at T1, water is going to take 25 pounds of that 50 pound load. And the remaining is shared by the spring. So in this process, because the spring deforms, actually, so let's say, okay. so the deformation we call delta H at T1. Okay, so that's the settlement, basically that vertical settlement at this time T1. And the final stage, stage four is the final condition. The valve is still kept open. And in this stage, all the excess pore pressure dissipated. So basically all the water flows out. Or not all the water flows out, but the excess pore water pressure dissipates. And spring reaches its final state. And in this state, all the loads are carried by this spring. Okay. So excess pore, pore pressure is zero. And that 50 pound force that 50 pound load is carried by this spring. Okay. So this is the final stage. And that final settlement, if we, this is the initial height. So that final settlement, delta H, final okay so that's the final settlement so this is that simple uh, cylinder spring model and this model as i mentioned basically mimics what happens when we load a clay layer okay. so this is a conceptual model 
that is designed to help us understand this process. So in the spring cylinder model, so this small outlet, outlet this valve here, so it mimics uh, small of the voids in uh, clays. So this, this outlet mimics basically that uh, small voids or holes in clay. And the spring it, in the middle, that basically mimics the soil skeleton. So that's soil skeleton. And then this settlement, so we, uh, I used the delta H in previous slides. So this is basically SC. So the settlement at a particular, particular time is related to the amount of water flows out. So Q out. So that's the water drained out, uh, we use Q. And it's directly related to um, delta U. So the excess forward pressure. And from that conceptual model, we see that the final stage is basically when that delta U is zero. Okay. So when that excess forward pressure is fully dissipated, then the settlement stops and all the loads are carried by the spring, which mimics again the soil skeleton. Okay. So that's the whole process so basically we use this conceptual model to understand the consolidation process and then to predict the rate of consolidation. The key to predict consolidation basically is to predict the excess pore water pressure dissipation throughout the depths, throughout the soil profile. And Tosagi's 1D consolidation theory basically solves the excess pore water pressure profile. And then we link that to the settlement in the consolidating layer. So next I'm going to talk a little bit more on this one, uh, Tosaki's 1D consolidation theory.